Hey guys, for today's Culture Pass Challenge, we are taking a trip on the El Camino Real. Come on. All right, so Chris, what exactly is the Camino Real? Well, the uh, Camino Real is literally the Royal Road or the King's Road, and that was any of the official uh, highways created during the Spanish Empire. So this particular Camino Real, now I'm gonna butcher this at home, <laughs> folks. So it is the Camino Real tierra, de Tierra Adentro, is that right? Correct. What does that translate to? That's literally the, the Royal Road of the Interior lands. Royal Road of the Interior, okay. And so it, it describes the road that runs from Mexico City mm -hmm. up to Santa Fe. From Mexico City up to Santa Correct. Fe. So how long does that take? How long, the, the, back in the day, how long would it take one to do that? You know, they, the, the caravans were limited by the speed of the livestock that they brought along to eat along the way. Mm -hmm. So they probably average, you know, 10, maybe 15 miles a day. So with that and breaks, it would take about six months. Six months. It's a little really? over 1,500 miles. Wow, that is incredible. So tell us about some of the, the landmarks out there. That was important to uh, the Camino Real uh, and, and why it ran this way, is that right? Yeah, and, and I think, you know, even without the landmarks, one of the things that when you come out here and visit, it truly captures just how desolate and harsh the environment was. So I think that's a really an important part of the experience. If we were sitting inside, you know, the in a suburb or inside a big city, you really wouldn't get that feel of just what, what a monumental task it was for these people going up the trail. But the reason we specifically put it here is that there are a number of landmarks that were really important uh, on the trail that you can see from here. Now behind us is uh, the Fray Cristobal Mountains. And that ended, that was the official kind of landmark that knew that travelers would know that they're out of a portion called the Jornada del Muerto, or the journey of death portion which was a 90 mile waterless track where they left the, the banks of the Rio Grande and made this shortcut. And so that was, that was an important, you knew if you made it that far that you were probably gonna make it the rest of the way to Santa Fe. Gotcha. Now we also have uh, Mesa Contadero mm -hmm. and uh, that was literally the, the, the mesa where the, where the livestock was counted. Because of the lava flow, there was kind of a narrowed area where they could drive the livestock that they were bringing along with them and count them for the official uh, number that they paid taxes on. And also, near Mesa Contadero, we also have Fort Craig. And that was built in 1854 by the United States government to protect travelers on the Camino from, from hostile attacks. And it later served a rather important role in the Civil War. So really, we're sitting right here where much of the history of New Mexico, particularly that of the Camino Real, unfolded. I-25 literally runs more or less parallel to the trail. Okay. So when you're traveling on that or Highway 1, which is, was the previous highway, which really was called the Camino Real Highway, mm -hmm. you're, you're more or less following that same path that those travelers did for some 300 years. Fortunately, it doesn't take years. us six months anymore to get up to Santa Fe. Yeah, fortunately, we're, we're in a modern car and not an ox Yeah, exactly, so. one of these. This, uh, I'm sure this wouldn't do well on I-25 these days. I don't think it's no. so. <laughs> For more information on how you can join me on the Culture Pass Challenge and the Camino Real, head over to casa.com and click on the Style tab.